Okay, hallelujah. Let's pray as we get into the Word of God today. Amen. And to, out of the sermon today, I pray, you know, if, that in everything, you will, you, there's one thing that I hope you will, you will see. Okay, that you will see, you know, God's plan that was in the garden was actually the plan for the temple, the, the temple of God. Okay, and that you will see, you know, God's structure of worship, how, how He relates to man, how man relates to Him, okay, in the garden, how all of creation, you know, relates in, in, the, in the plans of God, never change throughout generations. Go, all right? You will see the structure, you will see the plan, you will see the, the, the way of God, how God relates to even sinful men, you know, even in the, through the tabernacle of Moses and the tabernacle of David, okay, and so on and so forth, okay, and I, I will lead you, okay, in different, uh, I will lead you towards the, uh, the climax, okay, where you will see Jesus as the way that God has made it for us, okay, no more limited, okay, but unlimited grace, unlimited favor, amen, grace, grace to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray as we, as we get into the Word of God this evening. Hallelujah. Why don't you lift your hands to the Lord wherever you are. Lift your hands in worship. Lift your hands. Oh God, I want to behold you this evening. I want to know you this evening. I want to surrender to you this evening. Hallelujah. You know, that's, that's something, you know, I pray. You know, many of us, sometimes even I myself, because of the way the, the world is, right? Sometimes it magnifies the, the needs that we have more than the life that we already have. You know, to the point that whenever we come to God, we always put our needs in front. God, meet this need. Meet this need. You know, but at the end of the day, okay, God is not our idol, right? He's not, he's not just here to give us things, right? You know, we need to get this poverty mentality out of our minds, okay? We are here to do what? to seek first the kingdom of God, to seek first the right, the ways of God, to glorify Him. What is it that pleases the heart of God? What is it that brings glory to the Lord so that in my life, in our life, through our lives, that the world can see who God is? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Oh, Thank you, Lord. Father, the end of man, you said, is the beginning of God. Hallelujah. Father God, we come, we, we surrender our crowns at your feet. Hallelujah. Father, we are just men. We don't want to come with agendas of our own. We come to surrender, to receive your life in us, for us. Jesus, speak your word this evening. Lord, hallelujah. Not so that we can get things, but we can receive life. And that we can come to the place of righteousness as men, that were created by you. Lord, for the purpose that you have destined us for, we just thank you, Lord. Speak to us. Anoint me to bring your word to your people here and those online. We just thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, and type, Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you greet one another on, you, that you see on, on Facebook or on YouTube? Just greet one another. Amen. As we get into the Word of God uh, in the, in the, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Abiding in God's garden. Learning to live a fruitful life daily. Okay. And I pray, I hope that you can see the temple of God that that, you, that we, we come to be familiar, of, familiar with in the time of Moses, in the time of Samuel and David, okay? that you will see the original plan for the kingdom of God that has already been laid out right from the very beginning in Genesis 1. All right? Now, first, okay, last Wednesday, you know, I talked about what does it mean to be renewed. 
What does it mean to be renewed? Does it mean that the old things come back? Does it mean your old life gets recycled? It's not about that. Okay? To be renewed is coming to the place okay, of being made new. Right? Being made new. Okay? You know, and the thing is, you know, we are living in a time, you know, we, 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 we think that heaven only begins in heaven. But do you know that the kingdom of God, okay, is growing, has been growing for generations? Do you know that the kingdom of God, okay, has been uh, expanding through generations? The kingdom of God, you know, has been, has been, is growing at, even as we speak, right? But the kingdom of darkness is also expanding at the same time, okay, right? But one will be cut off for eternity, Another will grow, okay, for eternity, right? One will remain, the other one will be cut off, right? We are living, we are people of the kingdom that will remain. Hallelujah, right? God is already, has already fashioned His kingdom in His ways. God has already, you know, placed us or saved us, born again to be placed in, in a place of dominion, over the things that God wants us to be, to be uh, uh, governors of. Okay? You see, in Genesis 1, let's, let's define the purpose of man. Let's find out what the purpose of man in God's kingdom, right from the very beginning. Because God's plan has never changed. Right? He has never changed. Right? So, let us make man in our image, God said. Right? Let us make man in our image, God said. And according to our likeness. What does it mean in our image and according to our likeness? That means we are a reflection, right? We are a reflection of God. Okay? Right? To who and to what? And for what for? But we are not God. We were never saved or born again to become God. We were, we, we, man was originally, okay, uh, created to carry the image to be the, of the likeness of God as a reflection. We are the mirror, you know, the mirror that, 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 that carries the image of God to all of creation. Okay? So, and then God said, let them have dominion. Means what? That man, the original plan that man, God had for man was to be a governor to be the executive, okay, in charge of all of God's creations, okay, over the fishes of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in His image. Men, male and female, He created them. Then God took care of them. They had nothing to worry about. God said, God blessed them and God said to them, be, be fruitful and multiply. And this is the mission. Okay, man, original man was a missionary as well. Okay, why? Because he was to be fruitful and multiply. The, char the image of God that he carries was to be translated, was to be carried forward into generations after. From one generation to the next generation, the love for God, the worship for God, the image of God, the likeness of God in man should be translated down to all generations. Those that come after them, okay, Adam was tasked to share God with them, to share about God with them, with his children, with his grandchildren, with his great-grandchildren. His responsibility was to lay a foundation, you know, for how you should walk, how you should serve God. But of course, all was lost because of sin. Right? Or was it not lost? Okay? It was disrupted, but not destroyed. Okay? So, Man had dominion over everything. He carried the image, the reflection, the likeness of God wherever he was. Why did he carry the image of God wherever he was? 
Because you see how God relates to man in Genesis 2, 19-20. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to man to see what he would name them. This is how faith works, you know. Okay? God brings his creations to men. And then man speaks out the name, right? Speaks out the name of what God has created. Man didn't create, God created. God is Jehovah Elohim. Okay, he's El Shaddai. He's the creator of heavens and the earth. He's the creator of life. But man had a very important role. Every creature that you see on the face of this earth today is because Adam named them. Right? Adam put the name on them. Right? Okay? So, so the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and the wild animals. And God actually to God told them as well, let the birds multiply. Let the animals multiply. Let them grow. Yep? Let them grow. And do you know that the original, all the animals, even men, in the Garden of Eden at that time, they were all vegetarians. There was no meat to be consumed. All their food grew on trees or from trees. Okay, vegetation, right? Whatever the sun shines on, that was, life, that was food for them. Okay? And then God's mission to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers and fill the waters in the, the sea. Let the birds increase on the earth. Be fruitful and multiply was man's mission on earth. Every creature, every generation will know God because of man's relationship with God. And in every generation, because of the original man's relationship with God, the generations down the line should have relationship with God too. Okay, right? So you see, man, okay, had four original, or maybe five original purposes that was determined for him. Firstly, man had ex exclusive, not exclusive, okay, not, not, he was, it was not just special for him alone, but he had access to God that all other creatures did not have. Okay? You see how every time God, and God created something, He brings to man. You know? And man would be beholding the wonderful works of, of God. Wow, Lord! Another, another, another version of a, of, a, of a cat. Another breed of, of, of a dog. <laughs> right? another, another kind of a flying bird. Wow, you know, man, he was beholding the wonderful works of God. He was beholding God through his works, to the works that God created. Secondly, man was given a priestly responsibility, okay, to represent, to reflect God to all of creation, to reflect God to all of generations after him, right? He was to speak as God would speak. He would to declare as God would declare. And, and, and thirdly, he was in charge of worship. You know, Romans, the book of Romans tells us what? All of creation groans for the time that we will be redeemed. Why? Because of man's failure and man's sin in the Garden of Eden, right? That, that the, the role of man as the head of, of, the, of the worship of all of creation was disrupted. Okay, and because of man's sin, all of creation has been brought into corruption. Worship was disrupted. But worship in the garden with Adam and Eve was what? Okay, what was it for? How did man worship God? There was no music. There was no singing in the, in the, in the time of the garden. Like I will tell you why in a short while. But, but the work that Adam was given to do 
Everything you do, you do it unto the Lord. And fourthly, of course, the work of missions. Okay? And fifthly, you know, the tree of the knowledge of good or evil, you should not touch, lest you will die. There's always a boundary between God and man. You see, how close man and God were in the garden, side by side. You know, side by side in administrating all of life, side by side, right? You know, and this was one thing that was lost when man sinned. When man was cast out of the garden, this was lost. Man lost the, ex the, the exclusive, the unique access into the presence of God. But did he? He did not. Because our God is a faithful God. Even after he was cast out of the Garden of Eden, even after a cherubim was standing guard so that they could not turn back into the garden and eat take of the fruit of the tree of life. Right? But throughout generations after, God had never left man alone. You will see, you know how God began to work through even Abraham, through Isaac, through the 12 tribes of Israel, to build a congregational worship, a congregational, a corporate form of worship, you know, a people that will surround okay, the tabernacle of the Ark of the Covenant that is in the centre. God has always have to be in the centre of the corporate worship. Okay, but before even the tabernacle came, Okay, it was Moses, right? After they crossed the Red Sea, God came down, you know, God, uh, they, they, were, they were led into the wilderness and in the wilderness, they were lost, they were perplexed, they were confused, they were wandering and in their confusion, in their struggle, in their weakness, the presence of God came down on the mountaintop, on Mount Sinai. You know, it says, the cloud came down on the mountaintop on Mount Sinai. And Moses went up the mountaintop to meet God. The cloud came down. Who did Moses meet on the mountaintop? Who? Who comes on the clouds? Jesus comes on the clouds. Remember Matthew 24? Okay, that we will see. Okay, Jesus and the host of angels, the Lord of hosts, riding on the white horse that is called Triumph, okay, coming on the clouds. Je uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 7, the Son of Man okay, draws near to the an an ancient of days on the clouds, right? On the clouds. So whenever you see this statement, coming on the clouds, just like how, who Moses met on, the, on, the, on Mount Sinai, God, uh, Moses didn't just meet anyone. He met the Lord. He met Jesus on Mount Sinai. It was the Lord of hosts. It was the King of kings, the Lord of hosts that was on the mountaintop with Moses. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Who? Praise the Lord. Okay? Right? And, 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 but, and, and you see how, you know, and, and right below were the people all around, you know, beholding the wondrous sights. They were, they were seeing the lightning, the thunder, and all the, the, the cloud and all that. They saw, they beheld the glory of God even in the wilderness. See, corporate worship to God must always be the priority of every Christian every person that is born again. It must always be our desire to gather around the throne of God, to gather in the house of God, to lift up worship unto His name. Yeah? Okay? It has to be. Right? Okay? You know, and we must always be a people that will lay down. 
Okay, COVID or no COVID, the, word, the, the name of the Lord has to be worshipped. God has to be worshipped. Whether, whether, whatever comes, whatever may. Okay, the name of God, God Himself, Jesus, must always be worshipped. Hallelujah. You may pay the price to come to church, but that price is nothing compared to the price that Jesus paid to give His life to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Do we dare to lay a price to God? God is too expensive. It's too costly to come to church. It's too costly. It's too expensive. It's too inconvenient to come to church. Jesus laid His life on the cross. He suffered on the cross. Okay? He was nailed. He was crucified. He was mocked. Hallelujah. The Son of God was ridiculed by men, but yet he, he counted worthy to die for us. And yet today, Christians always think that it's too expensive, it's too inconvenient, it's too troubling to come to church. We have to repent. That has to change. Hallelujah. Have we forgotten the value of our salvation? What it took to save us? Hallelujah. If we think that the price of Christ his sacrifice is nothing. As Scripture says, we are trampling the Son of Man under our feet. And if we do this th these things, if we trample and we ridicule, you know, with our attitude, with our ways, the value of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, there's no more Savior that will come after this. Hallelujah. The fear of God. David found out the hard way what it means to worship God. You see, David had a heart that was after God. But he wasn't a high priest. He wasn't a Levite. And he knew okay, that the Ark of the Covenant is in enemy's land and it shouldn't be there. Okay, and the enemy, the Philistines said, come and take it. Because it's troubling our nation. It's causing problems for us. Our people are being destroyed because of this ark, of this thing with us. You know, so, so David got his strong men. Not priests, you know. You see, how, you see how that from the time of Moses, we always think that the law and all these things are very inconvenient, difficult. We think that God is making things difficult. God was not making things difficult. God was making it possible. Let me say this again. God is, was making it possible that a sinful nation, a sinful people, could still have access to the mercy, the grace of God, even in their unredemptive nature yet. You know, that they still have access to God as they burn their sacrifices, even though it could not take away the guilt and the condemnation. But yet, it was God's temporary arrangement. But that was not what God actually wanted. What does God want? Okay? And David, you know, when he went to take the ark back with, the strong, with his men, they didn't know how to handle the ark. Okay, this is in 2 Samuel chapter 6. It wasn't the tabernacle. The tabernacle includes the tent, the coverings, the, 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 the brazen altar, the, the candle lampstand, and all these things, the showbread. But the, the covenant, the, the Ark of the Covenant was by itself. Without all these uh, extra furniture, extra structures that, that origina origins in the tab tabernacle of Moses. It was the ark by itself. So David went with his men. And they put the ark of the covenant on the back of a cart pulled by bulls, bullocks, bulls, a bullock cart. So when they were journeyed back to, to the city of David, to Jerusalem, suddenly the cart stumbled you know, and because the cart was, was stumbling on the journey, on the path, okay, Uzzah, one of David's men, okay, 
stuck out, stuck out his hand to stop the covenant from falling. Okay, what happened? We think that, hey, this is, this is what normally people do. When you see something falling, you will try to stop it from falling. So Uzzah stuck his hand out. When he stuck his hand out, suddenly he was struck dead at that point. And David was angry. Wouldn't you be angry? Wouldn't you be angry? You know, you, ha, this is not a bad thing, oh God. This is not a bad thing. Why do you do this to us? Why do you cause this inconvenience? Do you know sometimes, okay, you know, I, I know many of us, sometimes we get very frustrated. God, we are serving you. God, we are doing this. We are doing that for you. And then you face setbacks. You face difficulty. You feel discouraged. And you wonder, why God? Why? Why all these setbacks? But David never allowed his anger to get to him. Okay? The fear of God fell in his heart. So what happened? He decided, leave the Ark of the Covenant in the house of Obed-Edom. And the Ark of the Covenant was in, the Obed, in Obed-Edom's house. A Gentile. Not an Israelite, a Gentile for three months. And in that three months, David was, un- reco- was, was finding out what is the right way to handle the tabernacle. What, why, did, why was God so angry to strike Uzzah down? Okay. And then after three months, they heard that Obed-Edom was blessed because of the Ark of the Covenant. Shouldn't we, you know, host the presence of God more in our families? You know, how do you host the presence of God? Okay, in our marriages, pray with your spouses. No, wait, okay. How do you host the presence of God? I'll show you in a while. Okay. So, David, after three months, he decided to go back. This time, he took off his robe, his king, his king, kingly robe. He put on the robe, the, 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 the effort the robe of the priest. He wasn't being a priest. He was, wasn't trying to be the priest. He put on the robe as a symbol, you know, as, a, as a proclamation to God and to the people. Only God okay, is the rightful king of his people. Me, David, I'm just the worshipper. So when they went to take the ark back, every time they walked six steps, the number of six is the number of men. You know, they, they came to God six steps. One, two, three, four, five, six. They stopped. Why? They're declaring to God, I'm men. We are just men. Only you are God. Not seven steps. Six steps, stop. We are men. You are God. Okay? And every sixth step, they will stop and they will burn sacrifices and they will, they will worship and they will sing and they will dance to the Lord. Okay? They will sing and dance. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, okay, in the time of Adam, there was no worship. There was no singing. Even in Moses' time, there was no, not much of a singing or celebration through song. But David understood. David knew. Okay? God must always be worshipped in the center of his people. Right? And he knew one thing. Maybe in three months of studying the ways of God, looking into the books of the law, the Torah. The book of Genesis is also in the Torah. Okay? In the laws of God. He found out, he realized one thing. Okay? Why is singing, why do we sing in church today? Why do we dance and praise and play musical instruments to the Lord today? Why? 
Do you know, okay, one of the angels, the archangels, not just any angel, one of the archangels of God, one of three archangels of God was a cherubim, okay, and his name, and he was very much in charge, the guardian of worship, the guardian of music, that God created him, so beautiful, so wonderful, the most stunning of all the angels that God created. Why? To signify the beauty of worship, the beauty of music that God loves. And when this angel fell, heaven was void of worship. Heaven lost its music. And David, maybe he knew this. He knew this. And that's why David danced and sing and praise to the Lord. Right? And remember, there was no Levite priest carrying the ark. And you know why God struck Uzzah dead? Because the ark, the presence of God, cannot be carried by any other thing but on the shoulders of worship. On the shoulders of worship, on the shoulders of the priest, okay, it should be carried. Why? Just like why Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem. That donkey, you know, in Exodus 13, 13, okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's signifying that Jesus was riding on us, us. Okay, the donkey was like us, labor, struggle, no fame, no name, nothing. We were nothing. You know, and Jesus rode the donkey. He was riding us into Jerusalem as a sign of triumph. That for the life of a donkey is paid by, with the life of the Lamb of God. The life of a human being, of human beings, the salvation of man is paid for by the life of of the Lamb of God. Yep, not you cannot place the, the bull the, the presence of God on a bullock cut. It must be on the shoulders of men. Lift him up, and he will draw all men unto yourself, unto himself. Lift Jesus higher, and he will draw all men unto himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. I'm enjoying this. It's heavy message, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Okay? So, you see, God loves music. God loves worship. David knew this. But more than that, God desires to be in the center of His people. Right, to be in the center of his people, and in two Samuel chapter six, verse four, twelve to fifteen, when he brought the ark back into the city of David into Jerusalem, the ark of covenant was placed in the center of the city, and it was only un it was under ordinary tents, open tents. Why? Because the tabernacle with all the tabernacle structures. Were, was left behind in Gibeah, in a different town. Okay? And the Ark of the Covenant, there was no burning of, burning of sacrifices, there was no brazen altar, there was no uh, sh table or showbread, there was no candle stand, there was no curtain at all. There was nothing. The Ark was open. And yet, the city was blessed. Right? What does, this, what does this signify? You see the progression of how worship was limited in the time of Moses was beginning to be open. God was declaring through the worship of David, through the Davidic generation, okay, the kind of worship that God is looking after, the kind of openness that God is looking after, that no more do you need to burn your sacrifices, no more do you need to, to offer sacrifices for your sins. Why? Because there comes a better time, hallelujah, that men would have access to the throne of grace in time of need at all times. How will God do this? How will God do this? Okay, let's go. I'm getting excited because we are, we are 
we are coming up to the high mountain. All right? You see, we need to go back to the Garden of Eden. <sighs> okay? Go back to the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve sinned, what did God do? God passed judgment on them and cast them out. Why did God do that? Did He hate them? No. God loved them. Why? God, whenever God instructs correction, He's putting the fear of God back into our hearts, into the heart of man. Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, right? But God didn't just leave them open in their, in their guilt, in their sin. What did God do to Adam and Eve? God did this. God, in Genesis 3.21, the Lord God made garment of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. The law doesn't, does not expose to shame. The law exposes sin so that we, could be, we will be clothed with the righteousness of God. In Genesis 3.21, it was garments made of skin. But our garment of righteousness is made of the flesh and the blood of the Son of God. The Son of Man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, David, David's style, you know, when David brought the ark back to, to the center of the city, it wasn't ex exclusive just for the, the Israelites, the Jews alone. Even the Gentiles could behold the Ark of the Covenant. Even the Gentiles, the non-Jews, could behold the presence of God. You see what God really wants? God wants people of all generations, people of all kinds, to know Him, to know His love, to know His grace. Okay? And throughout the tabernacles of Moses and David, they, they, they carried on the mission that was laid down in the book of Genesis, the mission to be fruitful and multiply, to be fruitful and multiply, that in every generation, in every nation, that every, at every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess the name of Jesus Christ, that people will know the name of Jesus and that the name of Jesus is the only name to be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Who? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, okay? And we should not bow. And, and today, we have the Great Commission, okay? The Great Commission is to what? To make disciples of all nations, okay? We have been given this task to carry forward to generations and generations after us to bear the image of Christ, the likeness of Christ to people around us and beyond us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But first, we need to learn to behold God. First, we need to learn to behold and to come back to being excited with the zeal of God for the name, for the person, for the one that we love so because He loves us even more. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And openness like never before. A worship that is powerful, not exclusive, but inclusive to behold Him. Ah, lay liao, tired already. Okay, let's move on. Okay, you see, worship was lost in heaven. But the Bible says, if they will stop worship, God will command praise out of the stones. We are the living stones that cry out to God. We are the ones that brings the sacrifice of our lips unto our Lord, unto our God. And through us, worship to God is restored. That's why after David brought the ark back into the, into the city, David put in place worship 24 hours seven days a week to God. Music and praise in the place of burnt sacrifices. Why? 
because the sacrifice of Christ, the victory, is in our hearts. The candle stand, representation of the Holy Spirit, is in our hearts. Hallelujah. And the presence of God, we can know, we can feel, we can draw near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to read one scripture as we close. In Hebrews. Okay. I don't have it on the screen, on the slides. In Hebrews. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with this same sacrifice which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers once purified would have no con more consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. You see, God wanted to take, a, wanted to take away the limitedness or the sacrifice of offerings through offerings so that we do not have stumbling blocks and that God will continue to draw close to us without any hindrance. But the most important thing was to get rid of the old nature that, brought, that brings condemnation and guilt. You see, sometimes, sometimes you may feel that you're not good enough for God. You feel that you're not perfect for God. But yet, in the time of Moses, even David, he wasn't perfect. Okay? But yet, he yearned for God. He yearned to build God a house, a permanent place. Many a times, we want God. Oh God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But it should be God. We want to seek after your glory, for your glory. We have our reward in Jesus. Will we let God have his reward with us, worshipping him around his throne? Hallelujah. Will we seek after his glory? Will we place him above every other important things you think you have to do in life? Above every other person in life. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, you, uh, some of you may be familiar with him, he's a revivalist in a long time ago. You know, he complained because his wife was a very powerful preacher and the wife was getting invited to preach very frequently that she had no time for him. So he complained. You know, he complained to his wife. He don't like what was happening. But the wife said to him, you know, you may be my husband, but he is my God. You may be my husband, but he is my God. Hallelujah. Too many a times, our husbands, our spouses becomes our God. They are more important. What they say is more important. When will come the time we will pay the price? I need to be in church. You don't like me to go into church? I know a lot of men that do not have a relationship with God or have a very weak relationship with God and their spouses are on revival and the men stop their spouses from coming to church. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Don't be unequally yoked. You love God, don't, don't get married to someone who does not love God at all or does not know who God is because it will destroy your own relationship with God. Okay? So, Right? But, but God did a wonderful thing for us. In removing the guilt, removing the condemnation. Okay, in Hebrews 10, verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. 
Jesus said, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. Previously saying, sacrifice and offerings, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire, okay, nor had pleasure in them. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every high priest stands ministering daily, offering sacrifice. Uh, repeatedly the sacrifices for sins which can never take away sins but this man this Jesus this Lord the King of Kings the Lord of Lords the High Priest the Great High Priest okay, that we have after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever he sat down at the right hand of God from that time okay from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit in us bears witnesses of the victory of Jesus for us. Hallelujah. And if the Son of God who sets you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's give God the glory. Come on, let's give Him praise. Jesus, hallelujah, is all you need to be excited for. Jesus is all you need to worship. Jesus is all you need to bow down to. Hallelujah. Let's bring Him glory that His glory can shine in us and through us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let's close. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just worship the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are holy, holy. Lord, there is none like you. You are holy, holy. Glory to you alone. Let's worship him. You are holy, holy. Lord, there is none like you. You are holy, holy. Glory to you alone. I'll sing your praises forever. Deeper in love with you. 
Here in your courts where I'm close to your throne I found where I belong I'll sing your praises forever Deeper in love with you Here in your courts where I'm close to your throne I found where I belong For your love is higher than the heavens Deeper than the seas And all I want is you in my life No one else can sanctify my soul Can make me feel this way Only you, Lord For your love is higher than the heavens Deeper than the seas And all I want is you in my life No one else can sacrifice my soul Can make me feel this way Only you, Lord Oh, only you Lord, only you Let's just say the Lord's Prayer together Wherever you are our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever evermore. Hallelujah. Today, if any of you that, are, that have watched this, or maybe in the days, months, years to come, you are watching this video, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, may I invite you to pray with me to receive Jesus into your life. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I repent of all my sins. Forgive me that it was my sins that you were crucified on the cross 2,000 years ago for. But thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your everlasting love for me. That right now, come into my life I surrender my life to you. Be my Lord. Be my God. You are my Savior. Have your way in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed the salvation prayer, we love to connect with you. Just PM us, message us, click on the messenger button. Just message us. We love to send you some uh, so, uh, salvation uh, kit reading material so that you can be blessed Amen Hallelujah Let's close in prayer Father God bless us as we go our way grant us journey mercy be with us be for us we thank you God that, you're, that you will keep us healthy we thank you Lord that you will continue to draw your people around your presence that you will raise word of life to be a church that knows and pays the price to gather around you all the time, to behold you, to exalt you, because we belong to you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say and type, Amen. If you have been blessed, okay, I want you to just type in the comment section, God has blessed me. All right? Praise the Lord. Okay, have a good evening. See you on Wednesday for our praise, pray and preach. Bye-bye.